Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. So very briefly, we are in uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 102. And we went over, uh, just to quickly summarize, we went over where Allah had said about what? That the people before you, that they asked a lot of excessive questions, they were not a sincere form of questioning. And that as a result of that, they simply asked questions to try to get out of a thing. And then for that reason, they became kafir. So, And by this excessive questioning, we talk specifically about Bani Israel and also the people of, of Salih salam. So Bani Israel had excessive questioning about their NBA, about their prophets that were sent to them. And as a result, they were misguided and they went astray. And likewise for the people of Salih, and it resulted in their destruction. And that also we said that there's a difference between, uh, there are some forms of questioning that are blameworthy, which we just explained, right? Questioning to get out of uh, obeying Allah, questioning to uh, finding ways out of, ha of having to do what Allah Ta'ala commands you to do. But then there's other forms of questioning that are actually required, right? So we said when Allah Ta'ala gives a, a command, a general command of which uh, in the command itself is not given the kafiyah or the how to, then you actually have to question. So for instance, we said like, well, Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَتُوا الزَّكَاةِ When Allah gives the command to pray and to pay zakah, well, you say, well, how do I pray? And when do I pray? And uh, what are the other things? Like, as we know, uh, can I just go and pray? Or, you know, do I have to make a wudu? Or do I have to be in a state of sahara? Or do I have to have purity, right? Those are required questioning. As Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ so ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So actually, in some in some contexts, questioning is not blameworthy, but actually mandatory and a command in and of itself. So it's differentiating between sincere questioning, as uh, Imam Shokani says, that sometimes So sometimes, uh, when it's a matter that's retain, uh, pertaining to either religious affairs or even worldly affairs, it actually there might be a requirement to ask all right and but the the real the real thing that we should ask ourselves is is there a need to ask so like when uh, when the Prophet ﷺ re revealed the verses and recited to the people about Hajj and informed them to do the Hajj, and the man asked, uh, a sana, a am, do we have to do it every year? And the Prophet ﷺ became angry at him and remained silent for a little bit and then finally said, no, but I could have said yes. And if I had said yes, it would have been extraordinarily difficult for you because then it would have what? Fawajibat alaykum. It would have become obligatory upon you if I had said yes. So don't ask excessive questions, right? If I tell you to make hajj, it's enough. If Allah Ta'ala tells you what, slaughter the cow, slaughter the cow. Don't keep asking what color it is and this and that. Just simply do it unless there's a need. Okay, there's a, there's obviously a need. We have to ask, well, how do you pray? Because prayer in and of itself is not self-explanatory. So he, he goes through the detailing uh, of the different types of questioning, some that are blameworthy, some that are not. And then we related, uh, as it also, uh, the other side of asking questions is do not rush to give people answers out of ignorance. So we related the story where the man uh, was at one of the ghazawat and was struck by a stone and received a, a major blow to his head. And when he went to some of his companions, هَلْ تَجِدُونَ لِي وَتْ رُخْصَةً فِي التَّيَمُمْ Is there any way I can just make tayamum? Right? Instead of having to make a full ghusl. And they said, what? No, مَا نَجِدُ لَكْ رُخْصَةً We don't find any way out for you, so no, you have to do it. فَغَصَلَ فَمَاتَ so the man made ghusl, and then he died as a result of that. And the Prophet Sallallahu was so angry when he found out. He said, you know, قَتَلُوهُ فَقَتَلُوهُمُ Allah." They killed him. May Allah Ta'ala kill them for their ignorance. Did they not realize? Don't they know that sometimes asking is the cure for ignorance? Also, did they not know that it would have been sufficient? Right? 
it would have been enough for him to just like make uh, tayammum or maybe to just wipe over his wound. So it, it's also a warning to rush to give people answers simply because they answer, you ask them and to give them out of ignorance that could lead to, lead to harm. So that was the other part. So now we come to the 102nd verse where Allah Ta'ala is talking about, again, these superstitions that many people have about the natural world. And so the pagan Arabs, the Jahili Arabs were people that had a great amount of superstitious beliefs uh, about the, the, the natural world. And so Allah Ta'ala says, no, it is not, Allah did not make the uh, Bahira or the Sa'ira or the Wasila or the Ham. He did not make them, uh, he, didn't, he did not uh, assign these qualities to them. Because what we'll see is that these are not just names, right? So Bahira, Sa'iba, uh, Wasila and Ham, they're not just merely names, but they're also designations. And so we'll go into the details here in a minute, right? They're designations. Rather, these are the people of disbelief that have fabricated this and have attributed to Allah. That was the other important thing, especially with the pagan Arabs. It's not just that they were people of kufr, right? They, they were, but part of of the way that they were people of disbelief is that they would make up things, fabricate things, and then they would say, this is from Allah. And they would attribute it to Allah. So Allah says what? That they are the people that what? الكذب, they just made up lies about Allah. And most of them have no understanding. Right? And so Allah is saying, I did not author uh, this superstitious belief about things. So Ibn Juzayi says about this, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ بَحِيرَةٍ وَلَا سَعِبَةٍ وَلَا وَصِيلَةٍ وَلَا حَامٍ So when Allah says that He did not designate or assign uh, these four types of uh, names uh, or qualities associated with certain livestock. And again, the ulama have said some of this was uh, uh, ibl, camels, some of it was random sheep, or some of them said it could have been bakar, cows. Either way, they were generally uh, soon to be some type of livestock. Yes. I mean, so are these designations for their use in like some religious rituals or some magic? Yeah, that's what we, yeah. So that's what I'm going to explain here. Yeah. So the, and again, this is where you have, this is actually a good example. You have to ask because the name Bahira, the name Sa'iba, the name Wasila, the name Ham, they're not self-explanatory what they even are. So you would have to ask, right? So again, this demonstrates there are some types of asking that is not only not blameworthy, but also, right, you know, essential. So Ibn Juzay says, لَمَّا سَعَلَ قَوْمٌ عَنَ هَذِهِ الْأَمُورِ Right, when some people asked about these practices, الَّذِي كَانَتْ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَةِ That were at the time of, of ignorance. هَلْ تَعْذَمْ تَعْذِيمْ هَلْ تَعْذَمَ تَعْذِيمَ الْكَعْبَ وَالْهَدِي Right, do they hold some type of uh, significance related to the sacredness or the sanctity of the Kaaba or or to the uh, sacrificial animals that were used like when people would make the Udhiyah is that what's being talked about? And so Allah is informing them no these names and these designations and what they represent to you this is I did not rubber stamp this these are not uh, things that I author they are not part of the Sharia these are just simply the people made up in their culture. Rather, the, the non-believers, they're the ones that made this up. So now we get into, okay, what are these names and what are their significance? So the first one, the Bahira. Fa'ila. So it says, first off, the name is built upon the morphological form of Fa'ila. Bima'na maf'ula. And so it is derived from a word that that is meant from from bahara right which means to split right so the we often think of bahar as an ocean but the verb bahara you know shaqqa it means to split and so the pagan arabs would sometimes take the ear of certain livestock and they would clip it or split it in a in a certain way so the bahira is the the cleft or the split one 
right now why did they do that that's what we're going to look at وذلك ان الناقه اذا انتجت عشره ابطل شقوا اذانها so it would be like for instance when a, a, a she camel would give birth to like 10 offspring because they always had it was also it was, it was a kind of superstition that involved both animals the natural world and a kind of numerology right so if this camel had seven babies or 10 babies or right? the number had to be important right so if it had 10 offspring then they would split that she camel's ear to designate it and then they would say they, they wouldn't touch it anymore they would let it graze on its own it's kind of sacred don't bother it we have to venerate it we have to honor it because it had 10 now if it had eight nine four six well okay we can ride it milk it slaughter and do whatever we want to it but if it had 10 right oh that's something special right and this is why Allah Ta'ala is saying that this is not part of the sharia that he legislated to people. And so they would let it roam free. And they would gain no benefit from it anymore, meaning that they wouldn't ride it, they wouldn't slaughter it, they wouldn't milk it, they wouldn't basically touch it as if it was something sacred. Uh, and now the second one, the Sa'iba, فَكَانَ الرَّجُلْ يَقُولْ It's like, a, it was like a she camel that a man, إِذَا قَدَّمْتُ مِنْ سَفَرْ or if a man returned, like he went out on a journey and he came back, uh, meaning that he didn't die. So like if you took this camel, went out on a journey and came back, or or you got sick and you were and you recovered from your sickness, now my camel is designated a sa'iba, meaning that now I'm going to attribute my traveling safe and coming back or being restored to health, I'm going to attribute it to this lucky animal, right? The animal is a sign uh, of luck, of Allah's uh, uh, being pleased with me, of Allah's fadl, and so uh, this would be the sa'ibah. And so just like the bahira, if you did that, if you went out on the camel and came back safe, or you got sick and you got better, now you don't touch this camel anymore. It's sacred. It, as, if, as if it's tied to your health or to your to your safe, safety. وَأَمَّا الْوَصِيلَ Now for the third one, the wasila. فَكَانُوا إِذَا وَرَدَتِ النَّاقَ ذَكَرًا أَوْ أُنْثَى فِي بَطْنٍ وَاحِدٍ قَالُوا وَصَلَتِ النَّاقَةَ أَخَاهَا فَلَمْ يَذْبَحُوهَا So now the the third one, the wasila, is that it's a she-camel, that's important, it's a she-camel that gave birth to a male and a female, but in one womb, right? I mean, they're like sort of like, you know, twins, so to speak. Like it gave two, two births at once. One had to be male, one had to be female. Then they would say, uh, there's some type of connection between these two. They have some type of connection. And so now we're going to give them don't slaughter it. They're making up, they're concocting their own rules, they're concocting their own sharia now we cannot slaughter these because these this the she camel uh, gave birth to a male and a female in one womb wa amma al Right, al ham. Now, as it relates to the fourth one, the one that they called ham, it's that it says what فَكَانُوا إِذَا نَتَجَ مِنْ سُلْبِ الْجَمَلِ that when a camel uh, again had what عَشْرَةَ بُطُونٍ قَالُوا if it had ten offspring قَدْ حَمَا they would call it uh, uh, it's like it's protected, right? Because you know ham from حَمَا حَمَا and فِعْل حَمَا it means like محفوظ it means it's protected. And so he said, for instance, that the, the Arabs will say, قَالُوا قَدْ حَمَا ظَهْرَ Its back is protected, meaning that you can't ride it. So if that camel had 10 offspring, it's so special, oh no, you can't, you're not even allowed to ride it. فَلَا يُكْرَبُوا وَلَا يُحْمَلُوا عَلَيْهَا شَيْءٍ That you can't, uh, you, you, you can't make, you can't ride it, nor can you make it carry loads. So again, this, this superstition associated with the natural world and numbers and things, just making things up. And this this shows that we cannot designate a thing to have a hurma or a ta'adhim uh, without there being a dilla. We cannot, uh, we cannot designate a thing to have a sacredness or a sanctity 
or something in a devotional way without there being a religious proof for doing so. And as Ibn Jusayn uh, says, relating to the, the, the other part of the verse, that rather these are the people of disbelief that have invented a lie against Allah. He says, عَلَيْهِ بِتَحْرِيمِهِمْ Their kufr is in making these things sacred. So we should not, you know, this is like, and this can extend to other things. Like, you know, you have certain athletes that, you know, I can't play the game unless I got my lucky pair of shoes or my lucky sock or, you know, this kind of thing that, you know, I won't be able to win the game. You know, people have tendencies to uh, associate some type of fa'idah, some type of benefit along with an object. So this is what they did that they made it. مَا لَمْ يُحَرَّمَ Allah. And this is something Allah Ta'ala did not make uh, haram. Again, haram here meaning what's sacred, not uh, haram like you can't do it. وَأَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ عَلَّ لَذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذَّبُ هُمَّ الَّذِينَ اِخْتَرَعُوا تَحْرِيمَ تِلْكَ الْأَشْيَاءِ So what the meaning of those who invented lies against Allah, those who initiated these prohibitions. So the one that started it, and then it extends to what وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ هُمْ أَتْبَاعُهُمْ It also extends to the ones that then follow, right, the people that initiate these practices. What? الْمُقَلِّدُونَ لَهُمْ They're the ones that uh, now uh, uh, ape and imitate them, that follow and they're, 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 they're muqallid. And so this is also something to be careful about the, the the aspect of culture, right? Because where do people learn these things? Like you might have some dude that concocts this in his mind. Oh man, that that cow had uh, three of this or this this camel had 10 of that. This person comes up with the idea, but then when you begin to follow it, or people say, well, this is what we found our ancestors doing and uh, you got to do it too. Right. This is where also the the ringleader and the muqallid they become equally blameworthy in this. Al Bahira to give a little bit more. As Shaukani then says about the Bahira, he says Fa'ila again. It's built upon that morphological form. Uh, right, and so you find other words that also have this designation here. Ma'khuda min al Bahar, and it is taken from uh, the word Bahar. Right, which again, not Bahar, but Bahar. So Bahar, the Ha in Bahar has Sukun. So it has no Haraka, has no vowel on it. But Bahar has a Fatha. So it's Ha'un uh, Maftuha. Bahar, again, Shaqqa means to split. And again, that's what they would do. They would, the way to designate that animal then as being sacred is that they would, it would uh, split the ear. So it would be the Bahira, the split one. Right, it would be right, the, the splitting of the, of the ear. Qala ibn Sida, one of the scholars, Ibn Sida, says, Al Bahira hiya lati khulliyat bila ra'in. Right, the also the, the kind of animal that would be a bahira is the one that has no shepherd and it would be just let loose, right? Waqila, it's also been said that he alati yuj alu darruha litawaghiti fala yahta atalibuha ahadun min al nas. And this is said, it is also the one whose milk would then be designated or dedicated to asnam, to the right, to the idols. And so none of the people would be uh, allowed to drink its milk. The milk would then be given like as a kind of sacrifice, right? Uh, to whatever their their deities were, and then they would they would split its ear, uh, as a sign for that to designate it. Right. So that's 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 uh, some additional information about the. Bahira. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah says, كانوا إذا نجدت الناقة خمسة أبطنا إنسان بحرت أذنها. And so likewise, the, 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 if now in, in, some, in some narrations, it was five. So if the camel had like five babies uh, and they, 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 they were consecutive, Right, that they were consecutive, then its ear would be split to market, and this is what the uh, the bahira would be. And so they go in. I, I won't. I'll. I won't go into a, a whole ton more detail. But actually, it's interesting in the tafsir. There's a lot of information about all of these names and how were they concocted. But the main thing is that what these are things that people would uh, make up their own things. They would deify, but then they would then say, Ah, this is something from Allah. That is also, right, 
the 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 blameworthy aspect is that in addition it's not just that they made up all this stuff on their own but then they will go back and they would attribute these things uh, to Allah Ta'ala. Were there any questions about anything that was covered? Sorry that the uh, sound was out there in the beginning. To comment, I think yeah. kosher water is good. Yeah, <laughs> cold, yeah. Nowadays, we're going to need that. Yes. Allah Allah. Bill Gates' uh, recycled uh, excrement in urine water. Yeah, you might have to slaughter your water now. <laughs> you might have to slaughter your water. Um, the, the, the trinkets or what you mentioned about like the forts at, or athletes utilizing you know, yeah there's a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of superstition in athletics I heard this uh famous quarterback recent i don't know what team he plays for but he was being interviewed and he was explaining how his wife he goes she my wife's a witch he goes no but literally she's a witch and she told me that she when she gets dreams that we need to do x y and z for the team so i need to do this and this and this so in my locker you know she came and he's like very nonchalant like this is acceptable and the norm and so you know she told me to make sure i have my little elephant and keep it there and you know i don't really believe in it but hey, it works sometimes so hey as long as we're winning uh, right he keeps his as long as we're winning his locker no, and, I, and he said she told me this season we won't win but next season we will but i gotta do x y and z but and it doesn't stop there because as a trader i know Wall Street has a lot of superstition like you gotta wear your socks like you're saying that we yes wear our socks x y and z for these days because we'll have a good trading you know I mean, it, it, it's, wow, we got to watch the moon. Yes, yeah. No, the, the, the human beings in all of their various cultural expressions and throughout time have always, they've always tried to concoct ways of making something uh, sacred and, and then also often tying that with some type of number, one, three, seven, you know, whatever the number is, right? Um, but then I think, again, it, that's one thing. It's another thing to say that this is also from Allah. Well, now that's the thing you brought up because at least they attributed it. <laughs> At least it was false, but they should, nowadays, like we were talking about, there is no God. It's the universe. It's this that brought it to us. So they incorporate this authority. There they were using an authority to... You know. Yeah, they they wanted they wanted to justify what they're doing, uh, and, and appeal to authority. Where people today will say, "Oh, well, Mercury is in retrograde, and uh, Jupiter is over here, and Uranus is over there, and the, the Halley's comet is doing this and that." You know, they attributed to these things, uh, and then so many numbers of this or that, and uh, it's quite astounding. Where it's actually the opposite of appeal to authority; it's yeah. people making themselves the authority, right? But uh, so th those those. Are some of the meanings that um, Ibn Juzay and Ash Imam Ash Shokani Allah, give uh, as it details uh, about some of those names? So, again, that's a good example of you would have to ask because in the ayah itself, you would not know what these things are by in and of themselves, right? So, there are sometimes you would have to ask about them, but make sure that when you're asking, it's one to ascertain like am i am i asking because i need clarification to do a thing or am i asking like to try to find a loophole or you know so that, that's some of the takeaway